Good evening to everyone and welcome to today's session. <clears throat> we have uh, a couple of topics which are the penultimate topics in your anatomy, which include the limbic system which controls our fears, our emotions, our memories and our sexual libido and uh, many more complex uh, part of the affect is all controlled by the limbic system. Then we have uh, the motor cortex is the second most important topic in neuroanatomy. The sensory cortex and motor cortex and what are the typical disorders which will occur if these happen to have a problem is going to be the last part of our neuroanatomy. So we have Dr. Akshara, Amrita, Sarvodaya, Vijay Rohit, Neena, Brahmaramba, Rohit. Today we are a little late, significantly late, but uh, better late than never. So limbic system is the typical anatomical substrate underlying the behavioral and emotional expression. The feeling, the feeding, the fighting, the fleeing and uh, undertaking the mating, they are all because of the limbic system. Limbic system also is closely having interconnectivity with the hypothalamus and also it has uh, its uh, ramifications into the autonomic nervous system. So the hypothalamus, autonomic nervous system, limbic system, they are all associated with one another. Now what constitutes a limbic system is a very, very important question. We have a periaqueductal gray hypothalamus, there is a periaqueductal gray, hypothalamus, amygdala and uh, the autonomic nervous system. These are all the components of uh, the limbic system. So if you look at the individual components of the limbic system, some of them are located in the cortical location and some are subcortical in location. So, cingulate gyrus is one of the important part of the limbic system which is a cortical structure. Then we have an area which is called as uh, the septal area, another cortical structure associated with the limbic system. Then we have the amygdala and this is called hippocampus and this is the hypothalamus part of the diencephalon. So these are some of the most essential components of the limbic system. Once more another way to just ourselves acquainted with the structures. I hope the voice is clear huh? and loud. That's good. <clears throat> we have the cingulate gyrus as what you can see here. Then the septus pellucidum, then we have the various septal nuclei and then we are having the hypothalamus olfactory bulb and uh, we have a mammillary body and we have a hippocampus, then we have the parahippocampal gyrus, then we have anterior thalamic nuclei, these are the important structures to be remembered when it comes to the limbic system. Another way of looking the same limbic system. It is the anterior nuclei of the thalamus, the septum and a portion of basal ganglia, the hypothalamus, amygdala and uh, paraolfactory area. Then the remaining thing is encircling it. That is the parahippocampal gyrus, the cingulate gyrus, the subcalosal gyrus and orbitofrontal cortex. So this is another way of the depiction. So what are the various subcortical structures associated with the limbic system, doctor? We have the hypothalamus, septum, the thalamic nuclei, especially anterior thalamic nuclei, the hippocampus, amygdala and basal ganglia. They are all the subcortical groups. First we will get an idea as to how these things are interconnected and then we will take up specific function of each of them. So 
if you look at the major components of the limbic system and their connections, we have some structures part of the cerebrum, cerebral cortex, telencephalon. Some parts are the part of the diencephalon and some nuclei located in the midbrain which are throwing the ramifications into the telencephalon and diencephalon starting from midbrain. They are the components of the limbic system. The first important part in this is the orbitofrontal cortex which is a cortical structure. It mediates the conscious perception of the smell and it has got the reciprocal connections with the thalamus. Where is the thalamus? Here. So in the thalamus with the medial dorsal nuclei, you remember thalamus has so many nuclei, anterior nucleus, medial dorsal nucleus, oh. When we read thalamus we don't know its importance. When we read about its neighboring countries, then we know the importance of the Indian boundaries. So, that is how it is related to medial dorsal nucleus of thalamus. Then, it is related to the hypothalamic nuclei and to the septal area for the medial forebrain bundle. If you remember, we discussed hypothalamus, medial forebrain bundle, pond eggs. Okay, you remember, no? All those structures. At least, if you don't remember, say we still remember. Otherwise, I will be disappointed. Huh? Uh, so, this part of this I am talking about. What is this called as? The orbitofrontal cortex. What is the importance of the orbitofrontal cortex? The jasmine smell, the perfume smell, the smell of a drainage, the smell in the wards of the government hospital, the smell of lochia in the labor room. We get different emotions based on the different smells, right? So, it is the orbitofrontal cortex which is deciding all that. Then the second important component is the mediodorsal nucleus of thalamus. There is an anterior nucleus, mediodorsal nucleus, ventro, anterior, ventro, lateral, ventro, posterior, lateral, ventro, posterior, medial, etc., etc. Lateral geniculate body, middle geniculate body, this is the entire structure of the thalamus, you remember no? the spread of it. In that I am talking about. Uh, the medial dorsal nucleus. This has a reciprocal relationship. Reciprocal means Mr. James, meet Mr. Harry, Mr. Harry, Mr. James. We introduce people in the conference, right? So that's called reciprocal connection. Between the orbitofrontal and prefrontal cortices and the hypothalamus versus this thalamic uh, medial dorsal nucleus, there is a reciprocal relationship. It also receives the input from amygdala and a very important part, I mean function of this medial dorsal nucleus, why everything should go and tell it. It plays a role in the affective behavior and memory. That numerical I forgot. This numerical I could be able to remember though it was told in first year anatomy. I still remember our anatomy professor saying, what is the commonness between the spinal cord, ureter and the femur? What is commonness between the two, three? Something to do with the length, right? So, in few scenarios and situations, I still remember a patient of hemibalismus as a third year student. And one case of Hurler and Hunter syndrome we have seen in the... the first year, first clinical posting, first case, when we have uh, just uh, entered clinicals. From then onwards, any pot bellied baby, even if, if the pot belly is due to SIDs or whatever the reason, first thing that comes to my mind is the hurler and hunter. So who is responsible for all that? It is the medial dorsal nucleus of the thalamus, which is very, very important. Once more to give you back the memory, the anterior nucleus and then you have medial nucleus, you have the biggest nucleus, pulvina are important in the vision, you remember no? Then we have a lateral geniculate body and a medial geniculate body, then we have an arcuate nucleus which is important and uh, there is a VP nucleus, VL nucleus, VA nucleus and the lateral dorsal nucleus, that's how 
we divide the thalamus into in that the medial dorsal is important because of its reciprocal connections with uh, amygdala etc hypothalamus and important in the affective behavior and the memory is what need to be remembered then comes the third important component of the limbic system which we are talking about anterior nucleus of the thalamus is a very important part of the limbic system it receives the inputs from the mammillary nucleus there is a tract called as mammillothalamic tract first if i give you any structure you should be in a position to tell at least after attending so many classes of neuroanatomy you should be in a position to tell whether it belongs to midbrain or hypothalamus or thalamus or cerebral cortex that much if you can tell oh my soul will be heaving in graveyard um, so tell me doctor you remember mammillary hypothalamus so it is connected to the thalamus by what is called mammillothalamic tract so in the thalamus who receives it it is the anterior nucleus of the thalamus which receives then anterior nucleus of thalamus in turn will project to the cerebral cortex to which part cingulate gyrus so it will be projecting to the cingulate gyrus and anterior nucleus of the thalamus is considered to be the most important major link in the limbic circuit of the pes okay now comes an important question it used to be a short answer question in the anatomy days write about pepes circuit right so hippocampus mammillary bodies thalamus and in the cortex you have the cingulate gyrus anteromedial nucleus in the thalamus will project the fibers to the cingulate gyrus and the anteromedial i mean and the anterior nucleus receives the uh, fibers from the mammillary bodies by mammillothalamic tract then hippocampus it receives the fibers from the cingulate gyrus and hippocampus in turn sends the fibers to the mammillary body and uh, when these fibers are passing there are ramifications which go to septal nuclei and to the hypothalamus this is basically called as the pepes circuit when you go to a indian exam at least if you remember what are the components of pepes circuit enough if you go for a usmle probably it matters what is connected to what in a little slightly more detail if you are writing a university exam yes actually more precision is required in university exam but we write more bigger stories in university exam huh? so one more way to tell you cingulate gyrus typically receives from anterothalamic nuclei mammillothalamic uh, tract connects the mammillary body to the anterothalamic nucleus and uh, the cingulate gyrus is in turn projecting to hippocampus hippocampus will send ramifications to mammillary body and to the uh, hypothalamus and hippocampus also sends fibers to amygdala amygdala also communicates to hypothalamus that's how they are all basically interrelated to each other so here you have the anterior nucleus and you have the medial dorsal both of them are the very essential components of the limbic system then we are saying septal septal nuclei and septal area here we said no where did we say here we said no when the fibers are passing from hippocampus to mammillary body some of them are going to septal nuclei so what is this septal nuclei doctor septal area is basically a part of telencephalon it is a telencephalic structure telencephalic means forebrain right diencephalon is all your thalamus epithalamus everything then what do you call midbrain ha huh? myelencephalon right 
Myelencephalon or uh, metencephalon? Mesencephalon. Okay. So septal area, which is the part of the telencephalon, it has a reciprocal connections to hippocampus. Hippocampus is which structure? Diencephalon or telencephalon? Diencephalon. Hippocampus is a diencephalic structure. And what connects the telencephalon with the hippocampal formation? Septal area, it is the fornix. And it has got reciprocal connections with the hypothalamus. And the medial forebrain bundle is the one which is connecting septal area of the telencephalon with the hypothalamus. And also it projects to via the stria medullaris to an area called as stria medullaris is a part of thalamus to the habenular nucleus. So that is the story of septal area. So you can see this is the area septal is talked about. Area septal is sends fibers to the amygdala, sends fibers to hippocampus, connected with the thalamus and also it is connected to the um, hippocampus, hypothalamus and to the habenular nucleus.